गुड इवनिंग थैंक यू डॉक्टर अजय शुक्ला फॉर नाइस इंट्रोडक्शन सो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द जेनेटिक एस्पेक्ट ऑफ ओबेसिटी एंड टाइप 2 डायबिटीज डाइट एंड एक्सरसाइज प्रोग्राम्स फेलिंग टू प्रोड्यूस सिग्निफिकेंट रिजल्ट्स द क्वेश्चन बिकम्स वेयर वी डिजाइन फॉर ओबेसिटी एंड डायबिटीज सो फ्रेंड्स जेम्स नील इन 1962 पुट अ the thrifty gene hypothesis he said that genes that predispose us to obesity were advantageous in early human history when starvation was an issue early humans went through cycles of feast and famine and thus more efficient at food storage and utilization were more likely to survive and reproduce during famine so during this feast famine cycle during the period of feast there was the successful uh, hunt and there was a plenty of uh, glucose and fat and this there was less inactivity at that time there was thrifty storage the, they replenish skeletal muscle glucose and triglycerides and they were more efficient storage of excess glucose and triglycerides in the post tissues and when in uh, famine and activity inactivity phase activity phase the hunters they used to uh, they had to travel long distances to find some hunt and there was lot of activity and they had to be uh, had to fast for many days so there was essentially there was decrease in glycogen and triglyceride stores and so this was a cycle in periods of feast there was storage of food and in periods of uh, famine and inactivity there was re- uh, depleting these uh, stores so physical activity and food procurement they were interrelated and they used to uh, give feast famine cycle and physical activity and rest cycle so these two were cyclic of a metabolic process there was flu- uh, fuel depots metabolic proteins blood insulin insulin sensitivity this all led to gene and genotype selection leading to thrifty genes and genotype selected that is used to conserve muscle glycogen and that used to replenish muscle glycogen so that way they used to survive the famine period but in modern days what has happened we have plenty of food and least physical activity so we have the feast stage and our genes they are uh, they have they have been tuned for storing these uh, items so that is why we have high storage of excess glucose and triglycerides in the adipose tissues little goes to skeletal muscles and there is no famine and inactivity cycle so there is no cycling of metabolic process fuel gets sunted into an even greater and unhealthy storage precipitating the metabolic syndromes constantly low skeletal muscle Uh, beta oxidation enzymes the relatively constant high insulin and insulin resistance so fast famine cycle famine and physical activity cycle used to evolutionary program biochemical cycles there was food abundance and physical inactivity this eliminated evol- evolutionary programming and metabolic derangements obesity and type 2 were the results friends diabetes is not just one thing, disease there are many genes involved in this and the that is why it is the thrifty genes what is the missing link in old theory there have the genes or we don't have the new theory is it is the function the degree of expression of the gene matters epigenetics this manipulates how the gene functions whether it's turned on or off and the degree of transcription so genome is hardware and epigenome is a software they are more susceptible to change while peter is in development genetic imprinting can be passed on for a couple of generations and short term adaptations to the environment so epigenome adapts to the unpredicted environment when in utero mother experiences famine epigenome overreacts and upregulates genes for food storage and utilization so in nowadays there is mismatch when predicted environment does not equal actual environment so obesity uh, develops so obesity is a polygenic problem it is very complex not a single gene issue 
it is not only matters whether one has a combination of genes, but how they function. Ethan et al. in 1988 put it best when they said that we have stone age genes and space age circumstances. So physical activity and food were likely intricately linked from the start of mankind, and it's a mistake to consider one and not the other. So friends, eating a large amount of calories alone is not the cause of the current epidemic of obesity and type 2 diabetes. For that, lumberjacks who used manual tools and undertook rigorous physical labor, they ate 4,500 to 8,000 kilocalories per day and yet had a BMI of only 25.5. Both very low calorie diets and starvation combined with physical activity deficiency may also contribute to the induction of insulin resistance. So the developed world is in the midst of an obesity epidemic, implying a positive caloric imbalance due to insufficient physical activity. It has been seen that short-term fasting, just 15 to 40 hours or a single exercise bout, can initiate a common adaptive response in skeletal muscles to increase the expression of a subset of metabolic genes to minimize glucose utilization in a peripheral tissue. Reintroduction of physical activity can restore metabolic flexibility to keep the cycle moving, thereby potentially reversing insulin resistance. So changes that occur in body and fasting, they increase levels of growth hormones, which benefits fat loss and muscle gain. They improve insulin sensitivity. It initiates cellular repair processes like autophagy, that is to remove dysfunctional proteins inside cells. The gene expression, that is changes in the function of genes related to longevity, that again occurs with the fasting. Now, the recent concept that is intermittent fasting or intermittent energy restriction is a diet regimen that cycles between brief periods of fasting and periods of unrestricted eating. It roots, its roots are derived from traditional fasting, a universal ritual used for health or spiritual benefit. We all know that we all uh, follow many uh, fastings, religious fastings. So intermittent fasting is an eating pattern that cycles between periods of fasting and eating. It does not specify which foods you should eat, but rather when should you eat. Common intermittent fasting methods, they involve daily 16-hour fast or fasting for 24 hours, twice per week. Other methods of inter intermittent fasting, they are 16 oblique 8 method, that is eating for 8 hours and fasting for 16, having an open eating window for 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Another one is spontaneous meal skipping. The basic concept is to skip meals whenever convenient. Other one is the 5-2 method, that is uh, our diet consists of regularly eating 5 days out of the week and fasting for 2 days. The other one is on and off is fasting. This schedule consists of eating normally one day and then eating very few calories or not at all the next day. O M A D diets consist of fasting largely for 24, uh, 23 hours of the day. So intermittent fasting is effective at reducing body weight, decreasing fasting glucose, decreasing fasting insulin, reducing insulin resistance, decreasing levels of leptin and increasing levels of adiponectin. Some studies have found that patients were able to reverse their need for insulin therapy during therapeutic intermittent fasting protocols with supervision by their physician. So this was the first in-human study published in 1985, where the effects of intermittent fasting and refeeding on insulin action in healthy uh, was studied. This was intermittent fasting every second day for 20 hours for 15 days. And it was found that insulin-mediated whole body glucose uptake rates increased Insulin-induced inhibition of adipose tissue lipolysis was more prominent and plasma adiponectin was increased compared with the basal levels. Again, this study was published in 2014 and this was religious fasting, that is Islamic fasting, Roja or Ramadan. And here it was a meta-analysis of 35 studies which found that fasting during Ramadan resulted in significant weight loss 
However, most of the weight loss was regained within a few weeks, and only a slight decrease in body uh, body weight was observed in the following weeks after Ramadan compared with that at the beginning of Ramadan. This again is a study for Ramadan fasting, and the primary finding of this meta-analysis was that after Ramadan fasting, low-density lipoproteins and fasting blood glucose were decreased in both groups. Again, in 2015, the same Ramadan study, there was HbA1c improved significantly. Despite similar body weight, there was reduction in body fat mass. So, in 2018, the, uh, this uh, study published in JAMA, effects of intermittent compared with continuous energy restricted diet on glycemic control in patients with type 2 diabetes. Friends, it is difficult to practice continuous energy restricted diet because you know, if you advise most of the patients, they are not going to follow it. Whereas intermittent fasting is easy to follow. And the results demonstrated that a two-day intermittent energy restriction diet is comparable to a continuous energy restricted uh, restriction diet for improvements in glycemic control. <coughs> Again in 2018, the therapeutic use of intermittent fasting for people with type 2 diabetes was assessed on uh, insulin. And this case, it was a scheduled 24 hour fast, consuming only dinner three times a week. This case series documents three patients referred to the intensive dietary management clinic in Toronto, Canada, for insulin dependent type 2 diabetes. Again, uh, this a very recent study published in 2020, this shows that biochemical changes during fasting are characterized by a glucose to ketone switch, leading to a rise of ketones, advantageous use for brain energy with consequent improving cognition. Ketone reduced appetite and help maintain effective fasting. Again, these three cases, as you can see here, the SB1C reduction was very significant in all the three, three patients. This study published in 2020, again, intermittent fasting as part of the management for type 2 diabetes. The studies derived from murine models suggest that intermittent uh, restricted fasting is associated with improvements in beta cell function and insulin resistance. Two main mechanisms are the autophagy lysosome pathway and an increase in neurogenin 3. The more consistent results are reductions in body weight, visceral fat, and glucose and insulin levels. This, uh, where uh, the therapeutic use of intermittent fasting and ketogenic diet as an alternative treatment for type 2 diabetes. In this, a 57 year old woman. With a 15 year history of type 2 diabetes with SVA1C of 9.3, was put under intermittent fasting and ketogenic diet. And we will see that in just four months, the SVA1C within four months of transition to ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting, the patient could achieve SVA1C of 6.4 from 9.3. So this was very significant reduction in SPA1C. Sir, we have last two minutes. Okay. Uh, intermittent fasting is their role in treatment of diabetes, a review of literature and guides for primary care. The majority of the available research demonstrates that intermittent fasting is effective at reducing body weight, decreasing fasting glucose. The cardiometabolic benefits, uh, all forms of fasting reviewed here alternate day fasting with 5 to and uh, time restricted eating produce mild to moderate weight loss and consistent reduction in energy intake again this is a user friendly method for type 2 diabetes the studies on if have demonstrated that efficacy in glycemic control reducing visceral fat controlling inflammatory mediators and markers such as crp and il6 so to summarize Intermittent energy restriction is efficacious in managing pre-diabetes and diabetes. 
with remarkable improvements in the metabolic and cardiovascular biomarkers, a lot more evidence is needed in order to incorporate intermittent fasting into established guidelines for the management of diabetes. Thank you, gentlemen.